All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Uh, today's video, I'm gonna pull a clip from my uh, my Wyoming trip and walk through it start to finish. I get a lot of requests sometimes. One, to slow down, you talk too fast. And two, to add some information to the videos. So that's what I've done. Pull this clip, I'm gonna walk through, slow down in some sections, show you guys what I see, where I'm gonna fish, and what I expect to find. Uh, near the end of the video, I'll pull a, you know, link another video where I talk about the rig. Um, I'll also explain it while I'm, you know, while I'm doing it. But if you want to see the specific flies and hear me talk about the rig, I'll link that near the end. So let's get this going. So here's a, uh, it's a cool little run right here. I, I basically think it's two runs. It's a top and a bottom. Um, it's got a little nice little flow here. So these are the areas I would expect to find fish. If you're looking at this, this is definitely a sexy spot. Yeah, when I saw it, I was pretty excited. I will note that this little area on the right over here, this looks like the spot you'd want to walk in. Uh, I was cautious and I walked back a little bit further. Uh, make sure I start well below where the fish are going to be hanging out at and kind of work my way up behind them. Always approach from downstream, fish face upstream. I've talked about that in a different video where I'm nymphing a run. I'll link that. It's right here. But it's important if, uh, you know, and I'll show near the end of this video why I like to start downstream and work my way up and fish from behind the fish. I'm fishing the inside, around the rocks, uh, through this deep pool. Actually really surprised I didn't find fish at the back of this pool, but it is what it is. So I'm slowly working my way up and I'm gonna fish the inside seam first. This is the section that I'll be standing closest to. And I do that so I don't speak, speak fish. I've uh, shown a couple of videos where I fish that area I'm gonna be walking uh, nearest first. There's usually some fish hanging out there. So it's about the second cast, two minutes in to fish in this spot before I find a fish. So I'm fishing a uh, eight and a half foot four weight, so Orvis Recon, about 10 and a half foot to my top shelf hopper with four X to that, that uh, dry fly, and two feet, 18 inches or so to a Pertagon. Again, I'll link the video where I talk about the flies right here if you guys are interested in seeing the flies. Uh, basically, every fly I use on this road trip, which wasn't very many, um, is linked in this video. I talk about it in way more detail than, I'll, than I can do right here. I drift through this spot a couple more times. Like I said, being thorough, making sure I don't spook any fish. They might be hanging out on the inside seam. Slowly working up, and this is the spot I thought might have the most or the better fish. So, um, after I drift through a couple times, I'm like, okay, something's wrong. This is just too good of a spot. Uh, when I first got to the stream that day, the water was a little stained. Uh, I actually was nymphing and I had a fish eating indicator, so I'd switched up. But I thought for sure the fish would be a little bit more aggressive and becoming, you know, would be willing to come off the bottom or come away from cover. I found out that wasn't the case. Um, if you watch my 50 fish in 70 minutes, I, one of the comments I talked about why I don't always fish super deep right away and, uh, in water with a little bit of stain because the fish will be more willing to leave their their cover or chase down a fly as opposed to having to put it on their nose. So anyway, first fish after adding some weight. That was the big change I made in this hole. I uh, added number four split shot. And after adding a little bit of weight, um, you know, I find a fish on the very first cast. We'll get back into drifting. So again, I'm concentrated on that far, that deep side over there. Nice calm water. Fish like to hang out in slow water. It's got some, it's, you know, it's got a little bit of flow to it. The surface a little broken up, so it provides a little bit of security for them. Again, a couple cast in, and I've hooked up to another fish. And the only change I've made so far is I added a number four split shot. Back into casting, same thing, working that far seam. Highlight this this dry, it drops. Again, right in front of the rocks, there's always gonna be a little soft section in front of rocks. And other cover. And this is a fun little fish. It's got a lot of, little bit of attitude.
So I land this fish, go ahead and get it back in the water, and I go ahead and I'll, you know, I'll save you guys, you know, three minutes of me just fishing back through the runs a couple more times. But I'm, I'm pretty thorough. After I catch a fish, I always drift back over the same run a couple times to make sure um, I didn't leave anything out. So anyway, I moved up. This is a, I didn't really think this was the best spot. I really thought that hole below was the better the better water. But it's a, it's a little plunge here, a little pull. And I do expect some fish here. So I'm gonna drift through. All I'm doing there is checking to make sure there's no trees in my back cast. Just run through a couple times, trying to pick off. There's some chunk rock down there. Probably some fish hanging out around those those rocks as the uh, current breaks off and in front of them and behind them. Highlight the dry, it drops. There you go, found a fish. So I go back up again, drift through a couple more times, just being thorough, trying to trying to work any spot. You know, fish like this and a little bit of the flow like this sometimes, um, you you almost have to put the fly on their face. So just making sure to work through each little section as, as best I can. At the same time, I'm I'm work I'm working my way over to that far side where that tree is laid down and that the little kind of little eddy right there. I feel like there's gonna be a fish over there. So release that little fish and I'm slowly working my way to that far side. A couple drifts. I think I did three before I got got it where it wanted to eat, but I'll slow it down right here and you can see the take. And this is a fun little fish. So what I like to note right here is the reason why I start downstream and work my way up is because if you catch a good enough fish in the beginning, if you start at the top of the run and it pulls you down through, you're likely to spook all the fish. So because I started down below and worked my way up, I was able to pick fish off as I was working my way up to this fish. And finally, like I said, I was fishing a dry dropper because I was hoping to have some fish respond to the dry. Uh, and this actually being a great stream, I'll link the video to that if you haven't seen the entire video, but it was probably a 50-50 day on dry to, to the dropper as far as like what the fish took. Um, and this is a great little fish. That's the video, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Try to walk through and give you some uh, some information to kind of talk about what I do, what I see. Made some changes, I've linked videos in this video. Um, I'll make sure to link those in the description as well. But uh, if you guys got any questions, leave those below and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon.